so yeah. It's pooping out again. Be another snow day at the lot. And cars to clean. But we're still gonna have a vlog, so stay tuned. So I didn't get anything recorded yesterday when I made the intro. This is the next day and it snowed again. And it's flipping cold. So that says seven Fahrenheit and it feels like minus eight because of the wind chill. That's like minus 14 with a wind chill of minus 22. She's freaking cold. So we're just gonna get the, uh, get the old bubbles cleaned off here so we can get to work. Those of you who are prone to snow in your neck of the woods, is it against the law to drive without clearing off your car? It is here in New Brunswick. Tell me where you're from and leave your comments down below. Yesterday's little storm that brought through, probably about uh, two to three inches. It was pretty light stuff, real fluffy, and uh, we were able to clean the cars off. But nevertheless, anytime that we do clean cars off, we've got to get them all clean, move them all forward, so we move them all up against the building, plow around that. The front row, we push them up closer to the road, we plow around that, get them all lined back up. So same thing with that row there, we got to move all them forward and plow all in behind it. So yesterday afternoon, when we left work here, it was probably somewhere around 34 degrees. So the temperatures were kind of mild and everything was melting. But as you can see by the shine on the pavement there, and all the way up through here, that all froze last night, obviously, because now it is seven with a wind chill of minus eight Celsius. So she's pretty darn chilly. So I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to scrape out here a little bit, uh, kind of a walking path for our customers. And uh, we'll throw some salt down to help, uh, help with that. But when the temperatures are this cold, salt really doesn't work that well. But we've got to take that precaution for liability reasons. So here we go. So I did want to share with you guys one of these little rarities that we get in here at the lot. This is a 2010 Pontiac G5 Coupe. It's an SE model, which means you're going to get the wheels and fully loaded on the inside. But take a look at this. 75,000 kilometers. That's about 46,000 miles on a 2010. Whoever owned this didn't drive it. But the thing is really in impeccable shape. The tires are all good. The interior, we really didn't have to do much in, into that is other than just give it a quick vacuum and uh, do the windows. But So on this car, we will probably have somewhere in the vicinity of $59.95. And people will say, well, Jason, $59.95 is a lot of money for a 2010. Yep, it probably is. However, one thing you got to consider, it's a 2010 with the mileage of about a 2014 or 15. So what would you pay for a 2015 Chevy Cruze? Basically the same idea. My guess is probably not $59.95, probably closer to $99.95. So 
These old Chevy Cruises and Pontiac uh, G5s, they were pretty tough cars with that 2.2 liter engine in them. Transmissions were virtually bulletproof and other than stabilizer links probably every year uh, and maybe some brakes, you're probably never going to have to worry about this thing. We've done all that. In fact, when we took it apart, we didn't have to spend any money on it. The previous owner really, really looked after it. So the other vehicle that we bought the other day, and I'll show you it, because it's inside where she's nice and warm. Woo. We just picked up. So this one's going to be a little more difficult to show you what it is, but you can probably tell it's a Dodge Avenger. Now this is a 2010 and we are in the middle of what we classify as a pre-sale inspection. And you guys all know what a pre-sale inspection entails because I highlighted it right here in this video. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and check it out. So even on something like a 2010 and probably even more so on something like a 2010, we go over these vehicles to find out what it is we actually have for a vehicle and whether or not we've got to spend money or do this or do that. As you can see, we've got the brakes all tore apart on this thing. Not because there was necessarily anything wrong, but simply because we wanted to make sure that we could service the caliper, check the pads and rotors. As you can see back here, the rotors are quite rusty. So we're likely gonna end up putting new rotors on this vehicle, as well as some new tires. The tires are showing signs of wear on the outside edge, probably an alignment issue. The steering wheel is off a little bit when you're driving it. So once we get it all fixed up, we'll send it down to the alignment shop at uh, Canadian Tire and get them to fix that up for us. In fact, based on the parts sitting here on the bench, I see two sets of rotors and two sets of pads. Yeah, so there's the front rotor on the other side, give you an idea what it looks like. She's pretty rusty. But if you look inside here in the frame rail, I mean, it's still in really good shape. There's a little bit of surface just on these welds and stuff like that, but no, nope, pretty good condition, just the same. And just a couple more little updates uh, around the parking lot here is the 2010 Mazda Tribute behind me that I told you we took on trade for the uh, 2016 Hyundai Elantra. Uh, we knew that it had a burnt valve, so we've got the uh, vehicle all kind of all tore apart. It won't run right now, and we're just waiting for some parts to arrive, and we're going to be replacing all the valves on that vehicle just so it doesn't become an issue for the next purchaser down the road. The 2016 Chevy Cruze that we had sitting out front, we sold that through an online auction, much similar to the Mitsubishi Mirage that we did one time. And this one is going to Quebec and uh, it's all paid for, ready to roll. Just kind of sitting out back here, out of the way. And you all remember the 2009 GMC. Well, it really didn't even hit the lot because the day that we finished it up, I had somebody call me up. That's a really good customer of ours. They've bought a couple of vehicles from us in the past. And I took it down to them at their house and uh, they really, really liked it. They came out the next day in the morning, took it for a drive and uh, fell in love. We worked out a deal and give me a pretty substantial down payment. We're just waiting till uh, the rest of it's paid for and it will be going out the door as well. So you gotta love it when vehicles move or turn in this business as we call it uh, that quick because uh, you know you don't ever want to sit on a vehicle for very long we pay cash like I've said before for all of our vehicles so we don't have any financing involved so if we sit on them a little bit longer it's not the end of the world but in the used car business usually 90 days is about the uh, length of time that you want to see a vehicle sit on your lot and and turn over so that one there just brought our average up really really good so I had to take my glasses off because they kept fogging up every time I come inside but Guys, as you can see behind me on the wall, we've got those uh, license plates and I've put the challenge out to you, my viewers. If you have some old license plates from your state or province that, you know, you just got them laying around and you don't have anything to do with them, I'm looking for a project. So I'm asking for you to send them to me. My information and address, if you're in Canada, there's a Canadian address in the description box below. If you're from the US, I also have a US address in the description box below because I live right on the border. I can just hop across the river and pick those up and you don't have to pay high shipping cost to get it to Canada. Also, t-shirts and hoodies are still on sale at bonfire.com. It's the first link in the description box below. I hope you'll head over there and pick up yourself some old car auto guide merch. I've got tees and hoodies, many colors, many sizes, and the prices aren't too bad either. Uh, Thursday evenings, we have our live stream with Straight Six Fan. His information is in the second link in the description box below. So if you want to head over to his channel on Thursday evening, the live stream starts at 9 o'clock Atlantic time, 8 o'clock Eastern, and 7 o'clock Central. 
and just take an hour off that for the rest you go. We call it a YouTuber or subscriber hangout. And the benefit of that is, is that everybody in the stream gets to see who's there and challenge themselves to go check out each other's channels in hopes that we gain subscribers. Grant and I, we are doing this until each of us reaches 1,000 subscribers. Grant's not too far away. I've got a little ways to go. So we'll be at it for a little while and uh, we want to thank everybody for coming in and showing the support for that. So as I end every video, guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again. Thank you.